Welcome to the final video in the basics part of the Introduction to R for Economic Economists series. Uh, after this, we will be moving on to more moderate topics that you might see in some of your classes, but not others. Uh, at this point, we're up to the stuff that really everybody who's using R is going to need to know, at least every economist. I guess some fields don't use uh, OLS, which we're going to be talking about today, uh, but we're going to be talking about regression. So. Uh, how we can we do a standard, normal, linear regression, OLS, ordinarily squares in R. Uh, and so we're going to do this with the function LM. LM stands for linear model. And so what we're going to be doing is running linear models, OLS, in R. Uh, so we're going to do the exact same data that we've been working with. We're going to use foreign to load in our Wooldridge data, wage one. And we're going to run a linear model. Okay, so let's start with a very basic linear model. So just LM. Okay. Now there's a couple things we're going to want to put in here. Okay. The first one is the formula that we want it to estimate. Now you might remember the formula. We already did a formula before when we were using the aggregate uh, command. We're going to use a formula here again. We're basically saying the dependent variable is a function of these other variables, the independent variables, the control variables, the right hand side variables that we are interested in. Okay. Uh, and the way that we do that is we start with the dependent variable, then we use the tilde, and then we use the other variables as well. So we're just going to start with one variable. Let's start with one variable, and let's say that we are interested in the relationship between wage and education. Uh, okay, so we want wage. We want it to vary as a function of, that's the tilde, education. We want to tell, our, we want to tell the LM function what data set we're working with. We're working with data equals to wage one. Okay, now if I run this, that's going to do it. This will run the regression, but it's not going to be too impressive. Let's see what happens if I run it. Okay. First of all, it's just going to give me the coefficients, which is not enough information. We also want the standard errors or maybe some asterisks to indicate significance. Now, you might remember a couple of videos ago, we talked about how R is always about manipulating objects. And this is where that distinction really comes into play. So if you have some trouble with this video, maybe go back and watch that one again. It might help you get things a little bit more in, in, in line. So what this is doing, right? This is not running the regression command and sort of giving you all the results. What this is doing is creating a regression object. The LM function creates a regression object. We have the regression sort of in our hands and we can do what we like with it. And so just by having it there on the line by itself is just sort of saying, hey, uh, I'm going to show you that this is a regression object, but it's not really giving all the information about it. So we have sort of created a regression object. We're sort of looking at it right now. Just like any other object, if we want to do stuff with it, we need to store it or put it through some other function that's going to do something with that regression object. So let's store it. So let's say our model one is right here. So if I do this, it's not going to output anything, but it is going to store our model over here in our environment, right? So now our regression is not just have, it's just, it hasn't just like run, it's being stored over here, right? We still have that object in our environment. We can look at it, we can click on it, we can touch it, we can play with it. It's got all this stuff in it, right? Which it didn't show us before, uh, but we are going to be able to make use of. So we've run our regression. And what can we do to actually look at it? We've seen the when we just put in the regression by itself, and by the way, if I just put model one in, it'll do the exact same thing as we did before. It'll show the, exact, the same coefficients. How can we actually look at the results of this regression? Now, there's two ways to do this. Uh, one is to go back to summary. Summary isn't just for summary statistics, as we used it in the one summary statistic vari or one variable summary statistics video. Uh, it's also for giving summaries of other objects, like regression objects. So if I put summary around this, it will show me a little bit more information. It'll give me more information about this regression. So it'll give me information about the residuals. Uh, so this distribution of the residuals, it'll show me the coefficients. Uh, now I've got the estimates and the standard error and the T value and the P value, as well as some stars to indicate significance. A couple things to note about this. One, this is kind of ugly. Uh, and uh, some of the information that we might be interested in is not included in the table format, sort of down here in a mess. Second thing to note, and this is important to keep in mind, is that the stars are not the economic standard stars. Now, uh, what the stars mean varies from field to field. 
In economics, typically, one star means that something is statistically significant at the 10% level, two stars means it's significant at the 5% level, three stars means it's significant at the 1% level. That's not how summary as a function gives us stars. Instead, what it, it sort of shifted down one. So uh, a, the 10% level is indicated by a period. The 5% level is indicated by one star. The 1% the level is indicated by two stars. And the 0.1% oh, and the, and the level is indicated by three stars. Okay, So everything sort of shifted over one. Yeah, so that's summary. So we want to maybe, maybe look at it in a slightly different way, maybe that way that looks nicer and is more amenable to economic standards. And we're going to come back to the stargazer package. Let's load in stargazer once again. Okay, uh, And instead of putting it through summary, we're going to put it through stargazer. Now, last time we had to do a whole bunch of stuff with you know subset and making sure that we were feeding it a data frame. Stargazer doesn't just take data frames, it also takes regression objects and gives us nice looking regression tables. So I just want to tell it that I want a text type table and it will give me this nice looking regression table right here, right? Doesn't that look good? Uh, so it's got everything in a table uh, and there we go. We can also, of course, just like last time, feed this out uh, to a file. So if I want to feed out an HTML version, I do that. You'll just put it right in my working directory right here. As soon as it finishes doing it, there we go. I can open this up in my browser, copy that right into Word, do whatever I need to do with it. Uh, the other nice thing about using Stargazer to look at this is that you can put multiple regressions together in the same table. So let's create a second regression object. Let's say instead of regressing wage on education, uh, we're going to regress wage on, oh, I don't know, uh, job tenure. Great, so now we have that stored. Uh, and so let's do two models at once. Okay, so let's add in some, some comments before we get away from ourselves. So summary of the model, nicer table with stargazer, uh, feed out the table to a file. And now we're going to do multiple models at once, and it will create one table with uh, a one, one model in each column. So if I, all I got to do is put in the second model there as a second option. Uh, if I do this, I had it still on the feeding it out option. So if I open this back up, you can see I now have two regressions sitting right next to each other. It's all lined up property. properly. It all looks good. And forgot to mention this last time, uh, but the stars are the economics standard star. So one star for 10, significant at the 10% level, five, two stars for significant at the 5% level, three stars for significant at the 1% level. Great. So Stargazer is sort of our key. I told you to be coming back. It's a very useful package for us. So. Uh, that's the basics of how we can create a regression object and then how we can display the results of that regression. Uh, let's, let's go back and let's, one more thing I want to talk about is these formulas. How can we get a little bit more detail in these formulas? Let's say we want to regress on more than one object or more than one variable. Well, that's very easy. All we got to do is add in new variables. So let's say we want to regress on multiple variables at once. So let's say we want education and tenure and a bunch of other stuff. So all I got to do is add in the new variables that I want to regress on. Uh, so I want, I want to regress wage on education, but I also want to regress it on tenure uh, and uh, let's say gender and whether you're married. And there we go. So now we're going to have four independent variables in our regression. If I run this, uh, oops, I overwrote model one. That's okay. Uh, let's call it model three. Let's run that again. So now we got model three. Uh, let's use Stargazer to look at our model three. And we can see our table with all three or all four control variables in there. And of course, the constant. Uh, R will include the constant uh, by default in your regression, even though I didn't include it directly. It'll just include it by default. If you want to do without a constant, by the way, think about what we did last time. We wanted to get rid of something. When we were doing subset, we wanted to get rid of a variable. We did minus that variable. We're going to do that again here. Uh, so we're going to do same model, but without a constant. It's not too often you want to go without a constant, but you can't. So I'm just going to do minus one because the constant is basically just regressing on the number one. Uh, and so that's going to be what it is. And then we're going to give it out in a stargazer. 
command. So let's run it, do it, and then this time you can see that there's no constant in there. All right, that's the basics of it. Uh, there's a lot, of course, a lot of bells and whistles that we'll be getting to later, but that's the basic idea of how you can run ordinary least squares uh, using the LM command, and then how you can look at the results of your regression using either summary, if you feel like it, or stargazer, if you want it to look nice, or you want to feed it out to a file that you can use elsewhere. That's it for basics. I will see you in the moderate videos. Thank you.